My dear brothers and sisters, I want you all to reflect with me and to imagine if we were traveling down a path and people frightened, full of fear, as we're about to take a left turn, they come out and tell us, no, 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 don't go down this road. It's very dangerous. Everyone who goes down this road, they're killed, they're destroyed. But if you go straight, you should be okay because everyone who traveled that path, they made it out safely. And these, some of these people, you know them, you know they're trustworthy. Are you going to take their advice? Or are you going to go down the path they warned you not to go down? With that in mind, something similar in meaning. And one of the smallest surahs of the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath and swears by time, the time of Al-Asr, well Asr. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by something of His creation, what is meant for this as the Qari, as the reciter of the Quran, is that you pay close attention to what's coming because it's very important. So this is putting emphasis on what is to come. And the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ And when you look into the Arabic nahu, the Arabic grammar, the inna and the lam, both of them are to put ta'kit. Once again, more emphasis. Emphasis on what? That al-insan, all of mankind, is in khusr, is in loss. And when you look at the linguistic format of the ayah, that it's a nakira fi khusrin. That means there's no exception to the rule. Every single human being is in loss. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the third verse, He makes an exception to the rule. When He says, illa, except. All of mankind are in complete loss. Illa. Except for those individuals who possess the following four characteristics. Those who believe and do good deeds they call to the haq they give da'wah to the haq they call to the truth and they call to have sabr to have patience. And as we reflect on such a small ayah, from such a small surah, but with such powerful meaning, it's important that all of us stop and reflect and ask ourselves, where am I from these four characteristics? Because this will show to us, and it will prove to us where we are. Are we in loss? Are we upon guidance? Or are we not upon guidance? If we look into the first one, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who have believed. Right away, most Muslims, they come and they put a check right away. Yeah, that's me, khalas. I got that one down. I'm a believer, alhamdulillah. But the word iman, what does it mean? Many people will look at the linguistic meaning of the word iman which means tasdiq, to believe. That as long as I believe, I'm considered a believer if I have belief in my heart. But this is not the aqidah, not the creed, not the belief of the true believer. As Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned, he said that the word iman, yes, lughatan, in the Arabic language, it means tasdiq, to believe, but in the sharia, it has a different meaning, a more in-depth meaning, which is made up of three components. The iman, which starts in your heart and then comes on your tongue as you testify, ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah. And then the third component, that it shows up in your actions. This is what the word iman means. Something that shows up in your actions. 
And we believe as Muslims that the Iman yazidu wa yanqus, that it increases and decreases. It increases with ta'a, with obedience to Allah, and it decreases with ma'asiyah, disobeying Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reality of Iman, it has its ups and downs, like a roller coaster, up and down. But how can we truly strengthen our Iman? A lot of times, we think we're going to find some special ingredients. We'll go to a Mawlana, to a Shaykh and say, how can I strengthen my Iman? And we want something like supernatural, something wow, you know, that's going to be only the, this, this, my brother, I only tell to a certain group of people, once you learn this technique, you're going to be, you know, have this super Iman. But the reality is, it's very simple. The basics. Having strong Iman, it starts with knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we know Allah? Through His rububiyya, through His Lordship, and through His asma and sifat, through His beautiful names and attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this leads us right away. Once we truly know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it has to automatically, something clicks inside. Like the domino effect, you hit one, the next comes. Right away, once that enters into your heart, it makes you want to act upon the iman. And that's why Allah told us, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those who believe and do good deeds. All throughout the Qur'an, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us the Jannah, and what the people of Jannah will receive, Allah always mentions all throughout the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ those who believe and do good deeds. The two come together. Never those who believe will be in Jannah like this. The ones who believe and act. The ones who believe and act upon their Iman. Because true Iman must show up in the actions. When we talk about good deeds, what is the definition of a good deed? Because now, as we're reflecting, we're trying to see where we are in each one of them. So what is the definition of a good deed? There's two conditions that must be met in order for any deed to be considered amal salih, a good deed. The first condition is the ikhlas, the sincerity that we only do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And secondly, the ittiba' that we follow the sunnah and the way of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because you might have ikhlas, sincerity, but if it's not in accordance to the sunnah, the way of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it will never be accepted. Then the question comes, what are the best good deeds that we need to focus on? Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself answered that question in the hadith al-Qudsi when he told us, مَا تَقَرَّبْ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِنْ مَفْتَرَدْتُ عَلَيْهِ that my servant does not become closer to me with anything more beloved to me than that which I made fard, compulsory upon him. And then if we want to become even closer, after we start with that which is fard, the salat, the zakat, making our hajj if we have the ability to do so, fasting Ramadan, doing the basics. Once again, back to the basics. Once we focus on that, if we want to come even closer to Allah and have Allah love us in return, He said, And He said, My servant will continue to become closer to me with the nawafil, the voluntary acts of worship, until I love Him. This is how you put good deeds into action. And once you put good deeds into action, what happens? Just like the Iman. It started with the Iman. And then it started right away. It pulls us into action. And once you have that Iman, and you taste the halawa, the sweetness of Iman, and you put it into action, right away, naturally, automatically, you want to call others. You want others to experience the ladha, the pleasure of what you're finding in your worship. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Describe for us that man in the story in Surah Yasin 
When he heard the haq, he heard the truth. What did he happen? Right away, once he heard the truth, he believed. Allah told us, وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنْ أَقْصَ الْمَدِينَةِ يَسْعَى And a man came from the far part of the city. How did he come? Yes'a, running. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اِتَّبِعُوا الْمُرْسَلِينَ He said, oh my people, follow the messengers. Right away, the iman put him into action to give da'wah. وَتَوَاصُوا بِالْحَقِّ To call the others to the haqq. If you're a true believer, you're someone who focuses on giving da'wah, calling to the haqq, making inkar of munkar, forbidding that which is evil. This is the way of the true believer. In Surah Yusuf, verse 108, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to describe for us his path, the path of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam. He said, قُلْ هَذِهِ السَّبِيلِ Say, O Muhammad, this is my path. And then he describes the path for us. قُلْ هَذِهِ السَّبِيلِ أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ I call to Allah. I give da'wah to Allah. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرًا Upon insight, upon knowledge. And then pay attention to the verse. What does he say then? أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبْعَنِي Me and those who follow me. So if you're a true believer of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and a true follower, then you have to be involved in da'wah. If you're not involved in da'wah, and da'wah is two main categories. We're talking about da'wah to the Muslims themselves to keep them firm on the deen and those who have gone astray to bring them back. And then da'wah, giving da'wah to non-Muslims. If you're not focusing on this, then you have khalal. You have a problem in the first two, either in the iman or the amal al-salih, or the good deeds. Because right away, it has to click in. Just like the sahaba, as soon as the iman came to them, what did they do? They started to give da'wah. How many of the ten who were promised Jannah by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they accepted Islam, six of them, through the da'wah of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. After the da'wah came to him, the haqq came to him, right away, he started to work and give da'wah. This is the way of the true believer. And what happens when you give da'wah? You become from the best. What did Allah tell us? In Surah Fussilat, verse 33. وَمَنْ أَحْسُنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَى And who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah, the one who gives da'wah to Allah? But pay attention to the verse. What comes after that? Because if you truly want to be from the best, it's not just about giving the da'wah. There's some other things you have to fulfill to be from the best. وَمَنْ أَحْسُنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ مَنْ دَعَى and he does good deeds. Once again, Al-Amal Al-Salih comes back. And he says, indeed, I am from the Muslims. Meaning that he's someone who has honor, he has izza, and he's proud to be a Muslim. And he makes it clear, he's calling to it, yes, I am a Muslim. Yes, I follow the best man to ever walk the face of the earth, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I follow the final scripture sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of mankind, Al-Quran al kareem And that's why I'm proud. And he says, innani min al muslimin that indeed I'm from the Muslims. My dear brothers and sisters, as we sit here in a country like Qatar, where we have such a golden opportunity, a gold mine, we have both some of our brothers and sisters who have gone astray that we can, inshallah, call them back to the haqq, give them da'wah. We have non-Muslims from our colleagues who don't really know about Islam. How many of them who have lived here for five, ten years, and they said, all my Muslim friends and colleagues, no one's ever talked to me about Islam. Allahu Akbar. What happens when you give da'wah? If someone accepts, as our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, that it's better than humr and na'am. And that is the precious, most expensive red camels. To translate 
and to a language that we understand in modern times, we always give the example of some red Ferraris. Uh, it's better than a, a bunch of red Ferraris in reward if someone accepts Islam through your da'wah. Also, he told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that whoever calls to huda, calls to good, that he will get the ajr of every single person who follows him into yawm al-qiyamah. You'll come yawm al-qiyamah, someone was guided for you. Your brother came back to Islam through your da'wah. Your non-Muslim colleague accepted Islam through your da'wah. You come yawm al-qiyamah and you find jibal, mountains of hasanat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who truly call to his way upon basira, upon insight, upon him. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآية والحكمة أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى وبعد الله سبحانه وتعالى at the end of this surah this very small surah سورة العصر he mentions the fourth characteristic that you must have if you're going to truly be successful and you're going to be saved from being in loss, that they also call for patience. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Hakim, the All Wise, from His wisdom, from His Rahmah, from His mercy, He explains to those and tells us that beware and be careful, be prepared that if you're going to be from those who believe and do good deeds and then give da'wah, you're going to follow in the footsteps of the prophets, what's going to happen? You're going to be tested. It's not going to be roses. You're going to be tested. What did Allah tell us in the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut? Verses 2 and 3. <laughs> Do the people think that they're going to say that we believe and they're not tested? وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ We surely tested those who were before them. And then he shows us the hikmah, the wisdom, so Allah can make clear those who are the truthful ones and those who are the liars. And these types of verses, when we reflect on them and we read them, Alhamdulillah, it gives us so much insight. It makes us feel good inside. It gives us peace of mind, peace of heart. When we see the difficulties that the ummah is facing, that it's all part of the plan. Allah told us in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 214. Do you think you're just going to enter into the Jannah and you haven't been touched? With that what was touched the nations before you? You haven't been tested like they've been tested? You think you're just going to enter into the Jannah? SubhanAllah. Look at the description. Allah said, poverty, difficulties, face them. And they were shaken. Shaken so bad, it was so difficult. Until the messenger, the messenger who has the yaqeen, the certainty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has the wahi, the revelation with him. When will the victory of Allah come? And Allah assures us, that indeed the victory is close. What's important for us as Muslims, that we reflect on these meanings. And that we know our role in supporting the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah will support us. Yes, we might face difficulties. But in the end, as Allah promised, لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That the good ending will always be for the muttaqeen, for the pious. As we end today's khutbah, my dear brothers and sisters, we see what is happening to our brothers and sisters on the ground in India. And what I want to say about this, without going into, into, into any details, because very important principle, as students of knowledge or scholars of Islam, that we do not talk about situations on the ground when there are scholars there. 
because they know what is best for the people. They see things. They have insight that we don't see. But I want to remind all of our brothers and sisters of some very important things for us. First of all, this difficulty is a reminder to us of the blessing we have living in a country like Qatar where we have the religious freedom that we have, the beautiful masajid and the peace in mind to be in safety and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no problems. It also shows us the beauty of Islam. How many Hindus and Sikh and all of this we have in our communities here where they live freely and they're safe just like we're safe and no one touches them. This shows the beauty of Islam, alhamdulillah. But what we can do for our brothers and sisters, obviously we raise awareness on social media. If we have any ties, any governmental ties, we can put pressure on the government in India. That's all good. But don't forget the powerful weapon that all of us have. And that is the dua. To raise our hands and to make dua for our brothers and sisters. We saw the power of the dua of the Muslims when they raised their hands for our brothers and sisters who were being oppressed in China. Alhamdulillah. And time and time again throughout history, we see the power of dua. So never look like there has to be a bigger solution or something bigger we do. Wallahi the dua. Silah thaqeel. It's heavy artillery. Just raise your hands with ikhlas. Imagine what's happening to our poor brothers and sisters. Imagine if me and you were in that same situation. When you feel that inside, wallahi, you have to feel what's going on to them in your heart because the ummah is one body. And then the tears will come down from your eyes and you open up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begging on Him to help and to protect our brothers and sisters in India and all around the world, those who are being persecuted and those who are being oppressed.